Hi guys, this is Jezza Plays, and let's be honest, this game is hell. It's the most intimidating game for people who are just starting out, especially since the game's been out for a while now, and there's so many experienced players out there who will just kill you instantly. I'm going to make a simple guide to what you need to know prior to playing the game, and I'm hoping that this will make it less daunting for the new people out there. All I want is a talk community to grow. Including this guide will be everything you need to know from day one of Tarkov in the most simple way possible. So starting out at number one is what is Escape from Tarkov or EFT as it's commonly known. On screen is going to be three blocks of text. Feel free to pause the video. These are taken directly from the website and you can read it yourself or you can just stay tuned and let me explain it for you. It's an online FPS shooter which focuses on the realistic elements. You have to stealthily scavenge the map looking for loot, killing both online players and AI controlled scavs or raiders. You then need to extract through one of the very limited extraction points before the time is up and without being killed by other players, AI scavs or raiders or dying from dehydration or lack of energy. You then need to also complete tasks for traders that gets you experience and then you can level up. There's no one clear winner in a game or a raid as it's known in Tarkov. There's games where everybody will extract, there's also games where nobody will extract. In short, it's a survival shooter with a PvP and PvE element, RPG elements and realistic military shooting platform. Does that make sense? No? Fantastic. So let's dive straight into the character. So this will be your main menu, you'll click on character, and this is what your character will have on you, and you'll have a stash. Your stash will look different to me, you'll have the basic beginning stash, and you can basically drag anything you want into your character, and that's what they'll go on the raid. Now when you go into a raid, it's really important you have a weapon, and you have the correct ammunition. We'll go through all the compatibilities of the ammunition later on. You'll always need spare ammo, you'll need medication, a bag so you can put any loot away. You'll need headgear to protect yourself. This tactical rig also happens to be armoured, but if you didn't have an armoured one, and you just had a standard bit of body armour, you would need to make sure that you have a tactical rig with you, like this. So next we're going to talk about the traders that we've got in game. So if you go back and click on trading, you've got 8 AI traders, and each of these specialise in different things. So Prapper will specialise in your Eastern weapons, so your Russian area, and they're your weapons and your attachments for them. Whereas Peacekeeper will specialise in your Western weapons, your M4s, your MP5s, and attachments for them. Your therapist specialises in meds, and they're the three most important to look at. Have a play around with these guys when you do get the game, and see which one you prefer to trade with. Next we've got the flea market. Flea market's really important in this game. If you manage to get out of a raid, you can sell all the loot you've got on the flea market. And this is what everyone does. So for example, there's currently 16,358 different weapon parts and mods in the game. And you can sell your own stuff on the flea market by finding something that's found in raid, indicated here. Click filter by item, and you can find that that there is being sold for 13,000. You can add an offer, and you can sell it. So there's a variety of mechanics that you can have in the game. The most important one is if you press Alt and T, it will tell you the type of ammo you've got in the mag, and how much is left. If you press Shift and T, it will ensure that there's a round in the chamber for you. Pressing Q and E will allow you to peek, like so, over the tree. Pressing Alt and S will allow you to peek the weapon without exposing your body on the right hand side. And pressing Alt and W will allow you to put the weapon above your head. Very useful if you just want to blind fire for a bit. Sometimes when in a firefight your weapon will malfunction. And that's usually because the durability or the ammunition isn't compatible. You'll notice here I fumble it and I actually press Alt T. But later on you see that I press Shift T which clears the jam and means I'm back in the fight. The final really important mechanic is changing your rate of fire. You just simply tap B and it tells you on the bottom right what type of rate of fire you have. Next you need to learn the maps and you need to learn where the extractions are and there's a few easy ways of doing this. Having a 3D map open up on a second screen is a fantastic way and I would always say as a new player you should always try and play customs. I think it's the best map to learn. This is because it's quite a simple layout and there's always one way in and one way out of pretty much every area by miles most simple map as well. The best way to learn however is just practice guys, continuously practicing. So now you need to know which extraction is open to you because although there might be 6 extractions on the map for PMCs and a further 7 or 8 for scavs, only 2 or 3 will always be open for you. The best way to know is double tap O and you'll see on the top right it appears. The ones with a question mark means they may be open but they may not be open, there's no guarantee. 
The one without a question mark, guys, means they're always open, so try name for them. Next, we've got guns and ammo. Now, this rabbit hole is worse than Alice in a Magical Wonderland, but let's see if I can help you at all, guys. Right at the beginning, you just want to know what type of magazine fits in your gun, and you just want to know what type of ammo fits in that magazine. And later on, you can learn what the difference is between BSBT, PSPP, HPBP, FMJ, PRS, SPT, US, and a Golnik. And all them different ammo types is just for one sized round. It's so ridiculous, but it's what makes this game absolutely fantastic and in depth. But like I said, right now, let's just learn what type of ammunition goes in what type of magazine, and what type of magazine fits in your gun. So to learn what goes where, just double tap on a magazine you've got, and you'll notice there's something called a compatible with available type. Hover over that, and if there's a gun which it fits in in your stash, it'll tell you. If it doesn't come up with anything, it means you don't have a weapon in your stash that it fits in, so you may as well just discard it. Next on the magazine, on the top left, it'll tell you the ammo type. For example, this one here is 556 by 45 So now I've just got to scroll through my stash and double click on every single ammo type I've got, and eventually, hopefully, find one which is 556 by 45 And next, you just drag it in, and that magazine's good to go. And then you just drag that magazine onto the weapon, and you're ready to play. It's as easy as that, kind of. Make sure guys that you do your tasks from the AI traders, they're really important. You simply click on the trader, you click on tasks, and then you can select the task. You do have to be a certain level before you can start some of the tasks, and you do have to have completed some tasks in the series before you can start the other ones. If you are ever struggling with a task, however, just look up on YouTube, because a lot of them are quite daunting, especially if you've never completed them before, and especially for a new player. Task gives you experience, so you can level up, and they also give you rewards, so it's very much well worth doing. Healing is an overly unnecessary yet necessary addition to the game. It's basically like ammo, where it's like Alice's little rabbit hole. So your play is split into seven parts, as you can see here. And if you get shot at any of these parts, you'll lose HP. For example, if I got shot at my thorax, I would lose HP on that thorax. And the chances are that will start a bleed process. Now the bleed process can only be stopped using certain items. So for example, a hemostat here will stop heavy bleeds, as will a tourniquet. For light bleeds then, you want something smaller like a bandage. And certain med kits, for example, the Cellua first aid kit here, will stop both. That'll stop a heavy bleed and a light bleed. However, to stop a heavy bleed using a Cellua kit, you'll lose a 175 HP out of the 400 HP that this has. So just under half. It's definitely worth having something specialised in stopping heavy bleeds, such as a hemostat, that has three uses. And then you go on to fractures. So I can fracture my left arm, my right arm, my right leg, and my left leg. And to stop that, you've got a splint. Now it's worth noting that while this is in the pouch, you can't hotbar it. But if I had this in my pockets or in my tactical rig, you can hotbar it, and then I could just press 4 to fix that. You can drag any of your med kits, providing they fit in your tactical rig or your pockets, onto your hotbar for quick and easy access. We've also got painkillers. Now painkillers will stop something, for example if you get a fracture, if you get concussion, or if you get shot, because apparently that hurts. And again you can hotbar this, just like so, and as soon as you get something wrong with you, I could then spam 4 and painkillers will be used. Now there's a use time of 3 seconds, you can use painkillers 4 times, but that only lasts so it only removes the pain for 80 seconds and it also decreases your hydration by 17, which is quite a big effect. Find in your own time, guys, a combination of what you like to use meds-wise. At the very beginning, you are gonna to want to use the basic, and that's the AI2, the painkillers, and possibly a hemostat or tourniquet. With healing comes hydration, and you'll notice down here, you've got your weight, you've got how much health you've got, and then you've got your hydration and your energy bars. Now your weight will determine how much energy and how much hydration you use and how much you'll use in raid. Your hydration on your energy will go down in raid depending on how much you run and how much you're carrying. It also will depend on if you get shot at. If you do lose your stomach and that goes to 0 out of 70, then your hydration and your energy will literally go to 0 and you'll be in serious trouble. If any of these hit 0 at any point, you are in serious trouble guys. To stop that then, you simply grab a drink or a chocolate bar and you'll notice that this here will increase your energy by 30 however it will decrease your hydration by 15 and then this one here will increase your hydration by 28 but it will also increase your energy by 8. Make sure you're always packing some form of drink or some form of chocolate bar they can be found in raid but it's very vital you don't get caught out. So insurance is another important factor you can insure your items with your AI traders and to do that you can either right click on an item 
click ensure and you can choose which AI trader. I always use Prapper just because he's the cheapest. But do note that ensuring justice gun alone will cost 24,000 and his return rate is quite slow. It'll take about 36 hours to get it back. The other way to ensure an item is if you get your character ready for the raid. Let's say I'm going in with just this and let's pretend I've got a magazine on. You go through and you click on a map, you click on a time. Here I can click on these and I can also click which individual I want to ensure them with and I can ensure them like that. Now insurance is really important because if you lose an item or if you drop an item in raid and no other player picks it up in the raid ends so nobody successfully extracts with your items you will get that back within the next 36 hours. You will have to then insure it again, and it is quite expensive. But for example, this weapon here, if I was to sell it to Mechanic, is worth 75,000. So I'm insuring it for a third of its price. I could sell that for 75,000, but then I can also get it back if no one successfully extracts with it. Now that insurance isn't the only way you can protect your gear, you can protect your gear using your little magic pouch here. Think of this as your little magic box that only you have a key to, and that key is your heart, guys. You love this more than you love anything okay when you start off you'll only start off with an alpha container which is what i have and it's only got four slots but if you die in raid it doesn't matter what you have up here it doesn't matter what's insured you will never lose what's in your pouch so you've got to make sure you put all your valuables in here i always have spare meds just in case and then i have doc's case with keys on because if you lose keys <laughs> it's your worst nightmare guys you may as well not play the game again do be aware if you do have meds in here or if you have any item in here for example grenades you can't hotbar them because it still has to be in your pockets or tactical rig. This is basically if you find something massive in the game or something worth loads of money, you just put it in your pouch because you've always got that safety net. But if you die, it doesn't matter too much because you'll keep the item that's the most valuable. So one last thing, guys. You've geared your character up to the teeth. You're thinking, I'm an absolute boss. I'm going to go in. I've got my food. I've got my meds. I've listened to Jezza plays. I've hotbarred everything I need to do. I've got everything possible to go in the raid. So let's find a map. He says, let's play custom, so you go escape from Tarkov, and you go, whoa, what on earth is this? What on earth is a scav, and what on earth is a PMC? Well, I'll tell you what, guys, let me tell you. Your PMC is your character that you've made, and you choose what they have. You choose what map you want to play, and you choose what time you want to play it at. And with the PMC, you will always start at the beginning of the raid. So, for example, if I went to customs, the customs is 25 minutes long. I will always start with 25 minutes left and I'll be one of the 8 to 12 players that are in the game. So the scav is a pre-made character from the game that you can play with. You'll have random gear that the game tells you that you have to play with. You'll spawn at a random point. You'll have completely different extractions to the PMCs. And because you are a scav, the AI scavs will not shoot you on sight. So the game is way more immersive and it's way more entertaining. As a PMC, if you die, you will lose everything that you brought in. But as a scav, because none of that was yours to begin with, it doesn't really matter. So this has been a short and a sweet guide and hopefully a non-confusing guide to escape from Tarkov. After you've done a few dozen raids guys and after you've raged a few times, do go out and seek some more advanced help and another advanced guide out there. There are loads out there and there's loads of people who would like to try and help you. Hopefully you found this enjoyable and hopefully you found this useful guys. And if you, and if you have, don't forget to leave me a like and don't forget to comment and I know to try and make another guide, maybe a more advanced one in the future. Good luck out there, it's hell.